Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Stay Positive. I hope you guys are doing okay. I know the past few episodes I've been talking about corona and COVID and quarantine a lot. And I still talk about that now, of course. But I'm trying to, you know, give you guys a little bit more of an escape. And I know myself, I'm kind of getting sick of hearing myself talk about everything. So I will, you know, I think this interview will hopefully be somewhat of an escape because we talk about other stuff too. Plus, it's with a really delightful guest. You guys are going to love her. Um, she's a really talented actress. She's been acting for a while now. And because she started as like a preteen, I don't know, very young. Um, and uh, shout out to Mike, our shared manager, for connecting us because it was really successful. I really hadn't talked to her at all uh, before this interview. So it was cool because it was kind of like, we were making friends over Zoom and it's like we're in a day and age where we cannot go out and just make friends at the park or wherever you normally go. Um, and so <laughs> making friends at the park is terrifying. So maybe don't do that. But, uh, you know, I think it is possible to make friends over Zoom. So go out there, just punch in random numbers and you might make a new friend, you know, the meeting ID. Okay. But yeah, in all seriousness, she's really cool. You guys have probably seen her in something because she's been in a ton of stuff. But most recently, um, she starred in the series Snatchers, which was on Go90, and now it's available on Amazon Prime if you want to rent or buy it during this time. Also, uh, she was in Nickelodeon's Ricky, Dicky, Nikki, and Dawn, I want to say. Nikki, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn. Sorry. Whew, close one. And... Um, also, she was in a pilot this last year called Woman Up that um, I guess didn't go to series, but technically it's still a big win, you know? We talk a little bit about that, about her career, about starting young, and also just the ways that she is able to keep spirits up given the time and also just before, you know? Because we always had to keep our spirits up. We're just asked to do it a little bit more now, you know? <laughs> more. Okay. So I'm excited to present to you Gabrielle Elise. Before we get into this interview, I just want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's episode. It is Personal Revolution Podcast. Uh, I know we're feeling very stuck inside right now, and you might want to be thinking about how to best take charge of your life at this time. You know, is there something you've been wanting to start that you're putting off? I mean, now is a great time to do that. I personally really want to start waking up earlier. That's another one of my goals I'm setting these days. Um, I even put my, you know, alarm clock a little further, things like that, but you know. Anything I can do so I can be more of a human being before I have to get on Zoom in the morning for work. Um, so anyway, that's where Personal Revolution is going to help you. In Personal Revolution, best-selling author and life coach Allison Task helps you take control of your life with inspiration and humor so that you move from where you are now to where you want to be. And you get to have fun doing it, which is very important right now at this time. So it's sort of like having a personal coach whispering right into your ear. This three-month podcast course, along with bonus episodes each month, will help you create a clear vision for what you want out of life, remove the frustrating blocks that are holding you back, and build a network that will help you create your future. The Personal Revolution podcast comes with a personal workbook and real-time access to a community of other changemakers oh, working towards their goals with positivity, possibility, and momentum. And for a limited time, all this is available to you for free. That's great. Download the Himalaya app in your app store, look up Personal Revolution, and enter promo code REVOLUTION at checkout to get your first month absolutely free. If you're ready to go after a better life, you are ready for Personal Revolution. We are here. Hi, Hi. Gabrielle. What's up? Thanks for doing this. Of course. Thank you for having me. It's so good to have you. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, I'll introduce you by saying you're a very seasoned actress because you've Thanks. started at a very young age and you're still very young, but you know, yeah. just just to be clear, you're a prodigy starting. I, I guess like I read your little bio and it said that you knew at 10 years old. I don't know how true that is, but this is the fact check. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think I started bugging my parents that I wanted to be an actor when I was 10. I think in my little little heart I always knew I wanted to be an actress little heart uh -huh. um and it kind of it kind of started with me I mean I was I was always up to something all the time I mean I would put on shows for my family um when my <laughs> friends would come over I would um you know we would, we would play dolls and like things like that but I I wouldn't let my friends be the characters they wanted I wanted them mm. to play the characters that I had in my mind and say the stuff right. that I was like no you say this so I was basically directing and being yeah. very bossy at the same time um and I didn't really realize that was a job um until you know you start watching Disney Channel and you start seeing like people 
um, on TV shows. And it wasn't until I was watching That's So Raven that I was like, oh, if that's a job, that's amazing. That's what I want to do. That's great. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was a huge That's a Raven fan. I feel oh. like literally I and then I've had the like I've had odd jobs in writing capacities kind of or like assistant capacities where she's come on as like because it's like I've worked in variety shows a lot and she does the thing where she'll be a guest for that episode or whatever. Oh my and that's gosh. like of every person I'm like the most starstruck. And I know. I, she's literally like miles away. I could just like see her through a door. You know, I'm like, oh my God. No, it's here. okay. I would geek out too. I'd be like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, but that's really cool. And the fact that you, you know, were casting your friends and, you know, being being in charge there. I mean, at least it primed you for what the real world is like. It's like for sometimes sure. you got to take the roles yeah. that are available. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, if you want to call the shots, you got to be in those sort of creative positions or whatever. Exactly. I'm just going to take that audio <laughs> bit and like put it somewhere and be like, see, I wasn't bossing you around. It was for my future job. So. Exactly. You're just, you know, you're operating in the world of where people have to make decisions and make sacrifices. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but the fact that also you moved to Los Angeles from Dallas is where yeah. you grew up. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, that like, what was that like, I guess, moving at that kind of young age for essentially your career? That's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember what age I finally moved out here. I think I was like six, like I just turned 16 on the, or no, no. I was 16 on the cusp of turning 17. And mm -hmm. um, my, my mom and my dad were very uh, resistant on me moving out here because they wanted me to finish my high school career. And um, I, I actually was homeschooled. Um, starting in eighth grade because I was doing, I was doing local acting um, and oh, wow. my local cool. acting kind of turned into um, people who had LA connections. So I started flying in and out a lot for like pilot season mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, like one of my first managers was a manager that was based out of Dallas, but had a lot of connections in LA. So that's how I started auditioning in the LA market. And I was like flying out two to three times a week. And, oh wow! Uh, yeah, That's so a lot. yeah, I can't go to was. school if you're no, can't on a go plane, to school. You know? Can't go to school, and uh, you definitely can't keep good attendance. So, <laughs> right. um, so finally, my parents were like, "Okay, I guess we have to do something about this." But again, they wanted they wanted me to finish school. They wanted me to have a normal school career in mm -hmm. the place that we grew up. Um, and my destiny, should you say, was like, "Nah, this is how we're gonna go." <laughs> Yeah. Um, so as long as I stayed homeschooled and everything like that and kept up good grades, like they were, they're were really supportive of it. Um, and my dad, my dad took a minute to come around. My dad's a medical doctor. Like he oh, spent wow. mm -hmm. so many years of his life in emergency medicine. So, you know, education was very, 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 very important to him. Um, but that was the payoff. He, cause he, I guess he's very, he's very logical and mm -hmm. I am very much not uh, and like to paint <laughs> that picture, like my my mom, my dad, my sister, and um, both sets of grandparents all were Air Force family. Oh wow! And I was the one that was like, no. So um, yeah, I really right, I right. really took my parents uh, for a ride, and um, even it took a minute for my dad to understand. But with, thanks with the loving support of my mother, uh, he got on board, and we've been on a great ride ever since. So. <laughs> That's great. What? A, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a big decision, and yeah, you being you know young and still like I, I don't know. I guess like I'm not a parent, but uh, I assume you know if somebody you know they they definitely had to at least see that you are trustworthy in the sense that like you know yeah. not only do you have the passion but also would have to have all the responsibility to like exactly do all that, which is yeah. big. So I mean, you clearly proved them right wrong <laughs> yeah I mean I, I kind of proved them right at a like when I started acting class because my, my mom tried to trick me and was like I was going into middle school when I first tried acting classes and she's like if you can commit to this for one year and mm. she set that up because it was on Friday nights and I was going into middle school and you know she's gonna like she thought like I was gonna want to just sleep over and like go to dances and stuff like that but my butt was there 15 minutes early every Friday for a year and I was like surprise wow yeah yeah commitment yeah, yeah no that's a that's a good test right it's like yeah. okay let's see if she's actually into this or if it's just yeah. a phase or whatever um but that actually brings me like I I sometimes think about young actors or people who start a career quite young and tends to be sometimes acting because it's like what kids can work really <laughs> except yeah. for actors right yeah um and so like 
have you kind of gone through different, I guess, phases of being into it or thinking of other things? Or has it always just been like full force ahead? This is it, you know? I mean, there, no, there have been moments where I'm just like, I'm done. Like, I'm just, I want to go to school and, you know, figure it out from there. And those have happened, um, like when I got let go of, or written off my first like Nickelodeon show. And Mm -hmm. then, um, I was up for, um, the new Spider-Man films to be Mary Jane. (gasps) Oh, or Zendaya's uh, character, and right, like, right, right. I am such a huge Marvel fan. Like I cried oh, yeah. when I found out that I am like my tape was going to producers, and I was like, "This is it, this is it." For you. <laughs> and sure. then yeah, you know, awesome. it it doesn't happen, and um, so the, the moments like those are when are the ones right. where I'm like, I really should be reconsidering this. Like I'm crazy for doing this. Um, and surprisingly, at that time, like I didn't really have a plan B except for just like go to school, like go to college. Um, as full time because right now I'm doing part time cool. online stuff. But um, yeah, I I always like to think that I would have a plan B, but not really. Even now, I'm just like, no, this is the only plan. <laughs> um, but there have definitely been times where I'm just like, I I can't do it anymore. Because um, you know, you since you're in this as well, like you you know, like there's a million factors that have nothing to do with you that totally. make you not get a job. But when you're, when you're like 16, 17, 18, you're just like, what the hell is wrong with me? Sure. Type of thing. You're like, and nobody gives you feedback on why you didn't get why, like why you didn't get what you get. And even though you like poured your heart and soul into this as artists should, that mm-hmm, rejection mm-hmm. is just so, it's so gut wrenching, especially when you get <laughs> so close. Um, right. Right. Yeah, but through that, I've definitely learned how to um, redirect the rejection mm-hmm. and not let it pull me in to a really lull of a low that much. That's great. Um, but I, yeah, I've never had like a plan B. Like I joke and say that, like, you know, maybe I'll like party plan or something like that because, you know, <laughs> LA's full of events. And right? I loved party yeah. planning when I, I was mean, younger too. So cool. Yeah, I mean, it's not even that you yeah, would have to have a plan B or anything because clearly it's going great. I I think just like the, you know, just feeling like we change or whatever. And like if if there was ever, you know, like a passion change or whatnot. But I mean, if you don't have a plan B, I think then all the more you're like, okay, this is it. I should really, this is really the thing for me. So that's a good sign. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, Um, are you you asking like as far as like passion changes? Like if there's anything else? I guess so. Or like, I know that like, you know, there's always the, constant need to reinvent or something like that too oh Um, yeah no definitely um I mean I'm doing I'm doing podcasts now about like being multi-ethnic in the industry because that's something that very much was an influence because um I'm a multicultural woman I'm black Japanese Scottish and Filipino and um when I first got out here it was really hard for people to uh match me with families because I wasn't exactly you know, I didn't really check off one box. Got it. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's and a huge part of being like a young, like a child actor too, is like you might be somebody's daughter or somebody, right. you know, who's already in the business, right? Yeah. And um, and even even then, like that that whole like checking off a box type of thing kind of plagued me my whole life, especially growing up in Texas and all places. <laughs> Great. Um, so, and ev- even now, like I'm still trying to be like, what does that mean to me? What is my identity then as a multicultural woman and things like that. So, um, and there's a lot of us, like a lot of mixed kids who feel the same way and who are in the entertainment industry and trying to make a name for ourselves. So, um, and I guess that all came about because, um, I was, I was going to write a show about what it meant to me. And it was, it was really hard for me to, um, kind of pinpoint what, my voice in the show would be considering you know I was like ooh, I don't really think I have a good uh perspective yet on what it even means to be mixed to me so how can I write if I don't have a like a solid foundation and um so I I came up with the idea I was like well what if I put out an open casting call to interview different mixed people and Mm -hmm. then um our manager was like well why don't you make it a podcast so yeah here I am a great, I mean, love podcast, clearly, here you are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I uh, listened to your episode, the one that's on YouTube. I don't know if there's, if that was like the first or. No, that um, was the very, that was the very first one. Okay, amazing. Well, it was really cool to listen to because I remember what stuck out to me too is when you guys were talking about, you know, 
uh, the actor that you interviewed, how he is uh, Latino, but then wouldn't necessarily be called into audition for Latino parts. Right. Um, and I had a comedian friend who is Brazilian, um, but he was saying that he like looks Russian to people, which is just, yeah. it's true. Like, um, and it's, and so he'll like get called in for like Russian mobster, but he has like a, you know, a Brazilian <laughs> accent. So he's like, well, I don't, I can't go in for Latino parts or Brazilian parts or whatever, because I, yeah. you know, A, they don't exist or like, they just are looking for a specific look, which is mm. very narrow. And that's just, I mean, you know, and I've been in America my whole life, but I do think our idea of like what the rest of the world is, is like super off. <laughs> yeah. No, just visually um, on top of everything else. But yeah. And then I, you know, go in a lot for you know, obviously Asian parts, but I think uh, I kind of am in that weird world where a lot are asking for, you know, certain Mandarin speaking or mm. uh, Japanese speaking or things like that. And I right. um, don't really know it. So I'm gonna like, yeah. okay, well, bye. But um, yeah. yeah, it is just, it's, it's such a thing, obviously, you know, that it's predicated so much on what we look yeah. like. So that's like not a lot of jobs, but this one in particular, it's like a, a lot of it. <laughs> Um, that's like a hard thing to deal with, I think, especially when you are not fully formed as like a human being yet. And yeah. it's like, oh, OK, so a lot of what you're learning about yourself is the way people are perceiving you. Yeah. Um, so that's a lot to go through. But, uh, you know, I don't know if there's anything like that you recall as a young person or or recently that you feel like, OK, needs to be work done there in that area of our of your job or industry. No, for sure. I mean, it's the one of the most prized things I think I've ever been able to uh, participate in was I was on an episode of ABC's The Catch, and oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I was able to play a daughter of two darker skinned African American parents, and I'm like, mm -hmm. this is awesome because, and I mean, like they straightened my hair, and the reason why that's important is because when I first started in this industry, like I straightened my hair all the time to make me look more European, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, more castable. And now I <laughs> rock my curly hair all the time and it actually makes more okay, sense, but whatever. Um, <laughs> nice. we, they, they straightened my hair and like, I'm a very light skinned individual. And I'm like, this happens. Like you, you see those two parents and you're like, there's no way that baby came out of them. And I'm like, yo, in the African American community, I can attest like my my cousins um, who have babies, they look nothing like their parents, but yet they're theirs and they're still melanated and they're still, you know, they're still their kids. Right, so right. I'm like, this actually happens. And so and it was actually a Shonda Rhimes show. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to her because I love her. And yeah, to, to be able mm -hmm. to like just have I mean, I was on the screen for like five minutes, but like to be able to, to do that and represent that for a minute. That was like yeah, the first yeah. time where I was like, maybe there's actually a future here for people to like widen their stance a little bit nice yeah yeah that is actually so funny because I feel like when I watch you know tv shows and then you meet the parents of like the character for the first time and you're like ah or you know it's just like yeah. so funny like how weirdly that triggers in our mind as we're like okay it makes sense to us but it's like what do we know like right you know, exactly like everyone looks different than their parents or some don't but it's like just hilarious that that's even part of our thinking is like well they got to be a perfect mix of the two you know right. <laughs> 50 yeah. 50 um but that's cool that is a uh, I don't know if I've ever seen the catch but is that the kind of the more recent one of hers that came out um it was <laughs> maybe a few years ago but I don't even know if it's oh, okay. still on um, got it got it it's like a I mean, spy e one of those show. right right one of the yeah. one of the Shondaland yeah wonderful projects um <laughs> great yeah I uh I think I was listening to her book for a while I don't think I finished it but the year of yes oh yeah listening to a lot of audiobooks you know so yeah. gotta do it um but that's exciting so then also I know just generally you obviously have worked on a ton of projects but there's a lot of like downtime between projects so like how mm -hmm. do you you know just because of the nature of the business it's like you're not able to be filming every single day of the year so yeah. like how do you kind of work with those in between times and you know keep it going even when it feels like you have well, no control well um you know? like I said before um I'm a part-time college student and um that I I used to hate it because it was just like oh I don't want to be doing this I'd rather be doing creative stuff but as my journey went on like school is such a equalizer for me because, um, you know, it's very black and white. You, you work hard, you study hard, you get good grades. 
you get, you get that instant gratification. Hopefully. You get yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. You get that reward and stuff like that. And with the industry, it's like you work hard, you put your heart and soul into it and you can still get crushed at the end of the day and sure. you don't even know why. Um, <laughs> so I yeah. learned to appreciate school in that way. And, um, so that's one thing that I do. And then, you know, trying to create things on my own. Um, I've had a lot of fun doing that in my spare time and just, you know, being a good daughter, being a good friend, trying to explore Amazing. and things like that. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it is a lot of time, obviously. Um, yeah. do you, and then now that like everyone's online with school and stuff, do you have a lot of, uh, any advice for those folks who are new to the online school situation? <laughs> Be on top of your stuff. Be on top of your stuff. Because sometimes you get notified at the, like, noti- uh, notified. Ugh. At the, <laughs> well, that's not a word. You get notified. Like there we go. At the last oh. minute. And you're like, when did this come in? I don't, uh. so Like a homework or, or like a homework or like a project or something. Project, or a chapter, assignment, a quiz. Like, like, um, if you have Canvas, turn those freaking notifications oh, right. on because they will save your life any movement your professor does will be on canvas and you'll get notified about it so wow yeah That's, online school is yeah. so easy to just like not do <laughs> yeah. I mean that's how I feel about like yeah it, I even going to even when I was in school I would sometimes not do it you know yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah for sure I mean like it's it's funny watching all the like bloopers that are happening like there was one I you know I've just been scrolling through like TikTok which is a disaster because oh it's so, such a waste but it's so fun yeah. um and there was one where like the professor was sharing his screen and he had like a little bookmark of like definitely porn or something <laughs> it was oh, like no. unfortunate you know it's like well it's it's definitely not okay oh, but uh, no it's, it's, That's uh, actually you hate hilarious. to see it you hate to see it yeah or like um students who have to like you know, they're living in their home with their family and then they got to talk their mom's coming in. You know, it's a lot. Yeah. And and even working from home too, everyone who has kids, I'm just like, this is, I am yeah, I don't. And let's be grateful at this moment because yeah, exactly. it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, it is a full-time job in <laughs> yeah. many ways. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, but to all the folks, yeah, I feel like at least for people who used to work from home too, they're kind of like, oh yeah, I know how to do this now. And mm-hmm. Here's a, you, know, you got to make sure you work in a certain room and go to sleep in a different room <laughs> right? if you can, you know. Um, but yeah, that's that's exciting. I, I, I can imagine, like, what was it like also being homeschooled when you were doing that when you were younger? Um, I, I really liked it. There was always this, like, stereotype that, like, homeschool kids were, like, super weird. Um, and I was very fortunate enough to not be one of those yeah kids um because like I was I was social interacting in my acting (laughs) classes and like auditions and things like that so it wasn't like I was isolated all the time and quite frankly I I liked it a lot because I didn't I didn't fall into the whole like mindset of other kids at that age that was like you know middle school and high school is my everything and this is my life this is only going to be my life for forever and I didn't fall into oh yeah yeah I didn't fall into those like cliques that you um fall into when you're in high school and then when you graduate you're like well what am I doing with my life now? Um, (laughs) I was kind of proud of myself that I always kind of had a one up in that aspect Mm -hmm. and didn't really have to be influenced by other people. I kind of just was able to stand on my own and uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's why like all these, you know, a lot of people who have either been working since they're young or whatever, I feel like, you know, there's a sense of maturity and like at least developing your own sort of idea of yourself hopefully yeah (laughs) in a way that I think yeah high school definitely not the best place to do that no no Um, I mean (laughs) I was lucky enough to have two of my best like childhood best friends and they're still my best friends now and like just hearing all of that stuff they were going through in high school like I was just like oh I am so glad I'm not you right now (laughs) like good luck yeah a perk for sure yeah (laughs) that's hilarious yeah so then do you watch a lot of like did you watch a lot of high school movies or things to that depicted high school? That was so, that it was, it's kind of lame because I, I, for a moment would watch a lot of college or like high school movies and mm-hmm. I'd be like, is that what that's like? Like, what yeah. is this? It wasn't really <laughs> like, like the party scene was always so fascinating oh, God. to me. Yeah, that's and then I experienced <laughs> once, once I got out here and like started going to like, quote unquote, like what they call kickbacks, I was like, at first they were fun and then you're just like it's the same old stuff over and over again and I'm like I don't understand how people in college can do this every day and be human I'm like don't you get tired of that like (laughs) 
<laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I don't think you missed out on much. I literally, yeah. well, A, high school, I never was even going to parties. I was such a nerd. So I also got my high school partying experience out of watching movies and being like, huh, I wonder if that's what's happening. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then, oh, wow. That's wow. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah. And then also all the movies are like, you know, 25 year olds playing like 14 year olds. Exactly. Exactly. Wonderful. You know, you love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's exciting. I mean, you know, I think everybody has like their way of, I, I think, yeah, definitely all that stuff is so glorified, too, that, mm -hmm. you know, like, you can't help but be like, oh, I wonder, that must be what everybody's doing. And then I talk to other people and they're like, oh, like, yeah, no, yeah, no. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, we're good. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then moving to LA and then being on Nickelodeon show, that's mm -hmm. like pretty awesome. Did you watch a lot of Nickelodeon before and then was oh. it kind of like a big deal? Oh, it was such a big deal. Like, uh, yeah. funny enough, I was, I was um, in New York looking at colleges oh wow um, yeah because for some reason I thought it would be a good idea to go to school in New York City um true and um I'm trying to remember it because it was so long ago but I just I just remember getting a call um and my we I was with my mom and my one of my really good friends at the time and her mom and we were at a Broadway show and um that theater didn't get good cell reception so when we walked out of the theater after the show like both me and my mom had like 30 texts 30 missed calls oh, from the manager yeah. at the time and i was like oh my god what's happening like did someone die <laughs> los and angeles we, is on fire <laughs> los angeles is on fire we have to get back yeah. <laughs> and um they were uh my manager said that uh nikki ricky don casting wants to see you tomorrow and i was like whoa hit Oh, I like, I'm in New York. I don't know how I'm going to get there. Yeah, that's what and happens like, when you leave Los Angeles. I know. Chance. And like it wasn't it wasn't even like a general call. It was like network and producers want to see you right away. Like it, it was a straight Whoa. shot. Uh -huh. So I was like, I didn't have an outfit. I mm -hmm. I was across the country. And so my mom and my friend at the time and her mom rallied together. Like I, I my mom and I went home and I studied that script for hours um she booked a flight for me and then my friend actually picked out the outfit for me to wear Ooh, uh, so uh -huh. I didn't have to go shopping for it so <laughs> thank, thank god nice. for her um, yeah yeah shut and up. she she came back we I packed a small bag and tooted my butt to LA not even a couple hours later after getting that call and uh there I was in the room and maybe like two days later I found out that I got it and I was like that was just a whirlwind of events wow. that happened but I feel like that's more common than not when people go sure I, I think just like the expected they, they expect you to you know drop everything and go which of course you did you know and yeah it's like part of it but I mean that's part of the job I guess yeah but that's really exciting too yeah. just the fact that like maybe that helps too it's like okay you're you know it's a, such a big event because you had to pick up and leave that yeah it kind of like you know was maybe that helped I don't know right <laughs> yeah um but that's very fun because I feel as if you know just as a young person and then being on a young person show is extra fun because you actually get to be like the center of or more of a center of storyline and you know maybe that was kind of the type of thing you were watching already yeah or I mean it, I yeah. was I was I, I love the fact that like um because my character Josie got to was like this quirky aspiring songwriter and she uh was very much a like nurturer and a uh, role model for the kiddos and I I guess in my nature, in a way, I always wanted to be like a be a mentor to younger kids. Um, mm -hmm. And I oh, I also forgot to mention that in my spare time, I mentor at a studio for younger ch children. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, at Zach Brandt Studios. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, but anyway, so um, it was kind of it was kind of really fun to be that and like have that in my repertoire, and especially it being kind of cool for me to do that on the first season of a show and have younger kids watch mm. me and be like, Oh man, like I wish I had like a big sister like that or like a best friend like oh, that. Oh like, yeah. Um, so that was, that was really fun. And I got to work with, um, oops, sorry, Mike, I got to work with Brian Stepanek and I grew up watching him on sweet life of Zach and Cody. Oh. So I got to go to work every day and wow. be with Arwen and oh, okay uh, I was like that sounds familiar okay I know yeah. I remember him yeah like the janitor guy the janitor guy Ugh, and hilarious I like my little kid heart was just like this is it this is amazing 
Um, That's a dream. Uh-huh. Yeah. And like I, I celebrated my 18th birthday. I welcomed womanhood in that way uh, when I turned 18 on set. Uh-huh. And like I was wearing a beautiful dress because of the episode. I got a oh, cake. Perfect. A whole room of people were singing to me. Like it was just it was a dream to be on that show for the year that I was. That's awesome. I got to go to the Kids' Choice Awards with my best friend. Like it was it was dope. That's great. And then that's what made you make the move or were you already out? In I was already out. I was already out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Got it. Very cool. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I think it's uh, watching, I think I got into watching like Disney Channel kind of late even, mm-hmm. like for the age group that normally watches because I didn't have cable and then I like got cable maybe oh, around wow. like 16 or 15 um, so I had kind of seen some things like That's a Raven on the weekends right. when they play it on ABC or whatever, but um, it was definitely like, I feel like I I got it as late into like Waverly Place. I mean, I know that's mm-hmm. Disney Channel and Colonial. I mean, loved SpongeBob, you know, all the, yeah. all the classics, um, yeah. but, oh, and uh, iCarly, and that was like a little late oh, yeah. for me, but yeah, also yeah. was showing and it was, it was great. And they make great shows. They make amazing shows. Um, uh, but yeah, and then, and then also just like, you oh well I know last year last year you did uh woman up which was a pilot yes very exciting yeah how was that experience because that's a huge deal I mean pilot season's obviously a big deal but booking Mm -hmm. one is crazy oh my gosh I mean like that that was I think that kind of reinstated my faith and like this is what I am meant to be doing um because like you you chip away at pilot seasons for so long and then you know you get one and you're just like, oh, thank God. Like, so some of my, like my, my, my heart was like, oh, this is very validating for me, but it's yeah, like, super exciting. And, mm-hmm. um, Zoe Lister Jones created it and she, she's freaking mm-hmm. awesome. And she's been in the business since she was little too. And, um, it was kind of cool to see her or to work with her because I watched her in new girl and just thought she was brilliant oh, and yeah. she's brilliant uh-huh. in everything that she does. But, um, the new girl is like one of my favorite shows, so I was kind of geeking out That's that great. that was be able to connect. And um, Elizabeth, oh no, I don't want to mess up her name. The creative new girl. Oh god. Oh yeah, um, Meriwether. Meriwether. Elizabeth Meriwether right. uh, was also like a producer and creator of oh, Woman cool. Up, and I was just like, this is insane. <laughs> um, so the fact that I got to work with those people and I. I forget how many pilot seasons that was for me me okay i'm trying to do the math in my head right now maybe like four or five pilot seasons that's the one that i booked Mm -hmm. um which was really dope because it was the first it was the first one it was the first um show that i auditioned for for that pilot season and i booked it and i didn't have to worry about pilot season anymore and have to face that rejection (laughs) another year so that was kind of cool um (laughs) but yeah that's an up it's a I mean the concept was amazing the cast was great um I got to work with um Kim Whitfield who has been like a comedy legend forever Mm -hmm. and the fact that she got to play my grandmother and like the woman who played my mom Trondi Newman um was just I mean hilarious ladies so much to learn from and just like that dynamic cast I was I just felt very very grateful and blessed and just like God, this is a great team. And I'm, I was so sad that it didn't go. Um, and I specifically remember getting that email and saying that even, even the network was surprised that it didn't get picked up. Or oh, this, really? uh, the yeah. studio was surprised that it didn't get picked up. And I was just like, right, right. oh, like, I mean, salt in the wound, but like also thanks. Um, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a big deal. I mean, just the fact that, you know, the pilot thing, getting that alone is big. But it's of so course, huge. then beyond that, there's so many factors. factors. Everybody says it's like one in, or it's like five out of the like hundreds will get picked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then even then they might get canceled a few episodes right. in. So it's just out of our hands at that point. But yeah, and still very cool. Um, very cool. Yeah, I, I, let's see. I remember last season there were a lot of, like ones that I had read and thought, oh, these are really great. It's like you never know what's going to get picked up. And network is so weird now and streaming is all yeah. year round. So I mm-hmm. guess kind of the – it's evolved a lot. I don't know if you've yeah. noticed that. Just no, I have. I mean, I feel, I feel like uh-huh. quote-unquote pilot season kind of is all year round now. I mean, sure. new shows mm-hmm. for new streaming services are always casting and they're always looking for content. And I feel like now it's more like – 
during the year you auditioned for new series on streaming services and then like pilot season is still the traditional pilot season yeah 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 that makes sense um yeah I remember last year too there were like so many Asian shows because it was like writing off of kind of like crazy rich Asians yeah. too so like that guy had a pilot and so it was like the most auditions that I had gone on for that like just it wasn't always pilots but it was like just like oh we're trying to do like this independent movie that's also mm-hmm. maybe the next crazy rich you know I think right it was just kind of funny but everybody around that time who who was kind of noticing that was like you gotta go now like this is it and then they're gonna take it back so you gotta go you know right and it did kind of turn out to be that way because like you know I was lucky enough to like uh, I tested for one didn't get it but it was like a really my first experience ever doing that and then this Mm. year it was pretty sparse but I mean you know I think it's just the way it goes but it's like yeah I mean I guess it is true that like you gotta go through a bunch and uh, no one knows what's gonna happen (laughs) right and um but that's still it is true that like just the idea of getting some sort of feedback that's positive is like okay great Mm -hmm. you can use that and write off of that for a little bit just like in your own validation centers yeah (laughs) um but yeah that's awesome um so then I guess like because you've kind of had that experience um have you had like kind of low points or high points that you feel like I don't know you've learned from Oh, no, definitely. Um, I mean, like I was saying earlier, those those lows were definitely... I, I feel like I kind of learned from those more as an adult rather than at the time. Yeah, yeah, just reflectively. I mean, I, I say this to my mom all the time now. I was like, if I have a child and she wants to be an actress, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself because it... it you're you're like I wasn't even like a full person then you know like you're so you're so vulnerable and so sensitive at that time as a kid sure and Uh getting that rejection you're just like like again you don't know what to do with it and I guess I kind of just shoved it down just kept on trucking but didn't really realize what it was doing to me and my spirit so but now as an adult I'm I'm trying to take it in stride like um the pilot not getting picked up I was like you know what that sucks but at the same time like it was my first ever pilot most actors get like 10 pilots and then only one of them goes during those right. years so it's like I yeah. booked one so bring on the other nine and then the <laughs> yeah one yeah will one come. down yeah exactly um which was which was a personal high for me because I because before then I would have been like I'm done I'm quitting I don't oh, I don't wow, want to do this yeah. ever again mm-hmm. um but also um one of the greatest highs for me was uh the movie the independent film Snatchers that just went crazy in the um, film festival circuit. And um, those were one of the roles where I like, I wasn't, I wasn't the ethnic best friend. I wasn't the stereotypical uh, quote unquote black nerdy girl. I was just a best friend who had her, like who stood on her own. That was one of the first times I ever got to play somebody who just stood on their own, no labels, no boxes to check, no stereotypes. It was just um, Mm -hmm. a great, honest character in an honest, great relationship with her best friend. Um, So that that was really awesome for me because I I felt like I kind of, uh, not kind of, I grew a lot doing that and uh, learned a lot doing that and... I mean, Snatches, and I will say always, is one of the best experiences of my career so far. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I had heard about it a lot just through Paul, who is our manager, and it just seemed like a really cool, different thing. And I'm a big fan of, like, kind of weird genre stuff, you know? So so it sounds great. I haven't been able to see it, unfortunately, but... Oh, I see that you're in it, and I saw the trailer. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't do blame you. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, "How dare you interview me?" Ugh, and not I watch know, my terrible. Mouth. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, but that's awesome. So then, like, yeah, just the fact that, like, you know, getting to explore different things because I think also too, like, independent stuff. I'm sure you have noticed is like gets to kind of explore that stuff a little bit better. Like, you know, yeah. stereotypes aren't as right. Yeah, prevalent. Yeah, prominent. Hopefully, there. Um, but yeah, fascinating. I yeah. yeah, I mean, I think even now I feel uh, like well, obviously nobody likes rejection, but I would say you know I the past few years, even this year compared to the previous year, I'm like okay, I'm getting a little bit stronger, but it's still so hard, right? And I think mm-hmm. like it's fascinating knowing that if you went through that so young, you know, that is tough. But at least you're you know building on that, and we're able to like even come out of that and still want to do this which is 
very important. Um, right. Because, yeah, I can't, uh, <laughs> I, I definitely even still, it's like, yeah, I guess, you know, I started in stand-up and it definitely feels like you get feedback. But even then, like, I'm not really, like, asking for feedback all the time because I'm like, well, maybe if I don't hear anything, <laughs> then... I don't know that I'm bad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's yeah, kind of like yeah. what I need to get over. Um, right. But it's definitely hard. Yeah. And it takes time. It does. Uh, and confidence. Um, but yeah, and so then obviously, so the podcast is stay positive and it's very, uh, you know, kind of tongue in cheek. But I also want to ask like what you kind of have found helps you through a lot of these things and oh, yeah. what works for you. And always, okay, for one thing, um, I want to say that I love the title because I'm always one for a good pun and yes. and cleverness. So when I saw I that, mean, I was like, good for you. I mean, my, my listen, boyfriend is so uh, annoyingly witty. And I'm like, I wish I could make puns as fast as you because I love them so much. But um, anyway. Right. It's, it's a, it, you know, they, can, yeah, I would say sometimes they get a little bit too annoying. <laughs> So, you know, sometimes, you know, it's great. But then, yeah, I, I would imagine you must be a good uh, girlfriend for just putting up with be, them just if like, that's a lot. Thumbs up, babe. It's funny. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, you got it. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the most important thing I've, I've learned so far is find things that stabilize you um, that are outside of the business. Um, keep that... I mean, you, you have to have a good support system around you because um, if you don't and it's always competitive or like always like, oh, what was me? Like you, you get tired really fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not fun. No, I would I would find a community that not only supports you and uplifts you, but also s- not not maybe the community, but like somebody you can create with a class you can create with like a, a great acting class Ooh. or a great writing class or something like that. Um, and. I think I think again the most important thing that I've learned out of all of this is just to you know listen to yourself find really what makes you you and just own the crap out of it. Um I mean I'm figuring out what it means to be a mixed woman but I know that that's going to help me some way somehow down the line and I'm like this is who I am this is what I'm bringing and hopefully it'll it'll click with something cuz you never know. You absolutely never know. So the more I feel like the totally. more you embrace yourself and all your weirdness and all your uniqueness is literally what somebody out there is looking for. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like dating. true and like <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. You can't. You got to stop searching or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's awesome. And I think I hear that from a lot of people, like because you know, I mean, it's also hard to know who you are, right? So I like the fact that you know you were saying that you started your podcast kind of to like figure out that perspective a little bit more. Yeah. And it is, cause sometimes it's like, okay, if somebody's telling me like, okay, just be yourself. I'm like, well, I don't even know what that, <laughs> what that means, means like, what? you know, you talk about? Um, which it's so, you know, that's a, that's a very common saying, but, uh, but yeah, I think the time that we put in to like figure that out is really important um, yeah. or the energy, but yeah. 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 Very cool. Um, how is uh, do you live with your boyfriend? Um, funny how enough, your relationship. We're, we're quarantining together. Oh, okay. Yes, good. But, uh, um, a very important stage of the relationship. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're doing the very, or I'm doing the very Asian thing where I plan not to move out till I'm like 26, um, 27, good, good. maybe even 30. I don't know. Uh, we're saving that yeah, money. Yeah, push man. it off. Saving you know? that, yeah. plenty of that money. But Beautiful. Um, yeah, he's he's great, and he's. Um, he was act- he's actually a veteran. He was a Marine, and I met him when oh. he was, uh, in the Marine Corps. And wow. uh, now he wants to be a writer and voiceover artist for, um, oh, cool. like, Adult Swim and, like, work with Seth, Seth MacFarlane and the people at Big Mouth and stuff like that because he always used to watch, like, Futurama and Family Guy and South Park and all that stuff. So that's what he wants to do. Incredible. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was, again, it was super nice to just have somebody that was very stabilizing and not in the industry because I've yeah, dated yeah. actors before, and you're just like, you are exhausting. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Is that yeah. is it just because you're both doing the same thing, or is it like the personality? You know, I feel like I feel like actors are just so... We're sensitive people. We're complex people. We're also sometimes very egotistical and narcissistic. And I'm like, only one of us can be crazy at a time. Sorry. This only one of us... It's at math. least for me, like I'm like, I know that I am the eclectic partner in 
a relationship and I'm like I can't deal with two of me on any level so (laughs) the fact that I have somebody who didn't even know anything about the industry but wants to get into it and is yeah already has a really great sense of self was just like oh my god it's like drinking the best bottle of water because it's so refreshing and you're just like oh right right god because like I I'll admit like I'm I'm sensitive I'm very emotional and very expressive and to have somebody who isn't that way or is like not as um sensitive about their artist tree or whatever Mm. like you know it's it's nice not to have somebody who's just as emotional as I am um and or wants attention as much as I do because actors are got it you know that's the stereotype that you know we didn't get enough attention as a child and that's why we are the way that we are but whatever nobody's proved that to be true right right yeah (laughs) show me the show me the receipts um yeah I I generally think the same thing I like uh I see a lot of comedian couples or actor comedian or you know that the kind of similar (laughs) performing types and I respect it but I definitely don't know if I'd be able to handle that because I already feel like I'm so like oh I'm so narcissistic like I I can't look at myself you know what I mean yeah and then if I had somebody else do that I'd be like oh god we're both here yeah exactly I'm just Uh, like and at the same time like for me I just I just like talking about stuff that wasn't industry related or like right take a little break actor related Mm -hmm. it was really nice to just kind of talk about somebody else's point of view in life and yeah stuff like that yeah that's yeah and that's pretty different too like how did you guys meet Uh, (laughs) so Uh the good the good friend that uh helped me out in new york was uh friends with benefits with a marine (gasps) that was uh that used to be an actor and uh So one day when they had a little hookup appointment, he brought his boys to just, you know, hang out in L.A. And that's how we met. Right. So, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. No, that's the best way to meet people through friends. Perfect. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I've never been on a dating app or anything like that. So those have always like weirded me out. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I met my boyfriend in school, but I think, you know, and I see more of my friends definitely doing the dating app thing, but it was before that was a thing. So I like, I'm also very foreign to that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's interesting. I, I am always curious though, how people meet people outside of their industry because. I honestly, I, I, that was very serendipitous. Cause I'm like, I don't even know if that would even happen today. Yeah, yeah. So. Right. It's hard to escape. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know people exist within that are different enough I'm sure it's just you know I have yet to <laughs> right I've yet to see that happen yeah. um no it's all good uh but that's that's very cool so then yeah I I also lived I lived at home because I so I grew up in kind of outside of Los Angeles but pretty close so I mm-hmm. never did the big old move thing um and so I lived at home probably till not too long ago um but my boyfriend moved out here so I was kind of like squatting you know kind of like all right I'm here but <laughs> yeah. I'm not really here am yeah. I here I'm not here um and yeah so then only recently did we move in but um but yeah I mean you know quarantine is a good way to test it out yeah <laughs> it is no complaints yet and uh, so. yeah yeah and it's definitely you know good to still figure out how to like have our own space and stuff I, yeah. I've been you know trying to stay away from the corona talk but I know mm. it's very relevant um, right now so have yeah. you been able to like sustain sanity during this interesting time I mean for the first week or so like maybe maybe not but I feel like now I'm kind of like okay back in the routine back to you know creating and things like that and um I mean it's it's yeah I mean it's it's a scary time I can't I can't like even just looking outside in my neighborhood sometimes and people just like walking around in masks and gloves and right stuff stuff like that it's just like it's 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 crazy it's crazy but um no, like, I think I've been able to keep my sanity, hopefully, so. Yeah, I mean, seems, seems sane. Seems sane. <laughs> Thank you. If I you seem sane, sane to me, I so hope. Thanks so much. You Thank passed you. the test. Thank um, you very much. Yeah, we had, like, like, okay, so I downloaded um, that app, Citizen. I don't know if you're familiar. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, my... One of my friends has the Citizen app, and now my boyfriend has a Citizen app uh, because of my friend, and uh, they used to live in New York City, and just some of the crazy stuff that would pop up. I mean, I can I imagine mean, if you're in a, like, that more of a urban, like, dense thing. Yeah, then I think the, weir- all I think the weirdest, happening. Yeah, oh my gosh, I think the weirdest thing that we saw on Citizen here was a McDonald's up the street, like, had a pantsless guy with a knife, Oh, and yes. somebody reported Gotta it. Gotta have that guy. So, you know. But yeah, I know, I you know, you hear of it, 
Yeah. I like refused for a long time because I just thought it was going to make me paranoid. And then I worked in kind of kind of uh, Hollywood area, Sunset and I think La Brea or something was the closest. So it was pretty, you know, lots of people, lots of businesses. And um, I think we had a guy with a machete. Oh, L- lots of machetes no. reported. But we were just like walking to get coffee, you know, and then l- then we got it when we returned. It was like we were pretty close to that chick-fil-a where the machete guy was apparently <laughs> oh <laughs> but my God. i mean you know because i think what happens too is like helicopters will come and people are like oh i wonder what's happening so they'll check their yeah and be like oh it was yeah. a machete guy I'm like, oh, cool, or, oh, a woman with a 12 inch knife that's a and, big uh, one. Yep. it's so straight and it's like i don't know how they even are able to tell like from far away what what weapon someone's wielding. right but i yeah. guess it's a machete it could be a pole like you know <laughs> you know how do you how do you even know from that angle um but i downloaded it now with corona just because no yeah <laughs> just no, to be even more paranoid than we already are but i would say i also live a little bit east of la and um we're now kind of more we used to be an apartment complex now we're kind of more of like a whoops like an isolated house or like a house with other houses and it um so we're like closer to the street you know yeah and we had a package get stolen um, just during this time because we're like leaving packages outside and like oh darn it you know that sucks but then like the police came to our house and like returned it because they like found the guy oh who stole it oh wow so this was like an interesting thing and I, and then like people have just been ringing our doorbell non-stop they're like oh hi and then like when a police officer just to drop off stuff or like a police officer came back and was like hey you guys are the guys who had that package stolen and I was like oh yeah yeah and he's like oh yeah where'd you guys get those because we got weights um and I was like, oh, where'd you guys get those? Because they're all sold out online. I'm like, what? I don't, uh, I got them from Amazon. Like, <laughs> that is hilarious. Like, I think people are bored. I don't know yeah. what's going on. No, but I kind of, kind of going off of that is like, I even taking walks, like people, people are just so much more friendly. Right. I think we're all deprived. I think we're just like, I didn't realize how socially deprived people were until yeah. now. Um, right, right. And it's like, it's kind of been nice because I'm like, I hope this sticks because uh, sure. it's, it's just been nice to like interact with people who really want to genuinely talk and see how you're doing right. and um the cutest thing that i saw was like this this little girl who would you know be on an ipad or like you know her iphone was like purposely drawing uh chalk on the sidewalk and i'm like i don't know how long it's been since i've seen a child in chalk on the sidewalk right. but i mean that was That's a normal occurrence a, like... when i was growing up <laughs> but i'm like it was kind of foreign but at the same time like the most right. adorable thing i've ever seen and i'm like <laughs> Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like a relic from the past. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What a reminder of simpler times. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But wow, yeah, it is true because I think, yeah, we're very deprived and even the people who were like, oh, I'm not a people person. I just want to be inside and like, don't talk to me. You know, I think are like, okay, well. Yeah, like this is is too much for me. to be talked to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a good silver lining, I suppose. Um, Are you watching anything good on on the TV or or, uh, streaming or whatever? are uh watching tiger king oh we've good, gotten yeah. to episode Gotta four do yeah good crazy so yeah. we jumped on the hype train and uh i've been watching a lot of disney plus i kind of oh, went yes. through I the whole marvel plus. timeline so i'm done with okay. that and now i need something right. else to watch but yeah amazing so do you um have a favorite marvel movie oh that's so hard <sighs> um <laughs> Yes, but I, d- I don't even think it counts as part of the Marvel Universe anymore. Um, mm. The old, not old, what am I saying? I guess old, I don't know. The Andrew Garfield version of Spider-Man, the first one. Oh, wow. That was uh-huh. my all-time favorite. You and know, people, I haven't seen that whole I feel like or whatever so it is. many people are going to disagree with me, but uh, don't watch sure. the second one because it's awful. Jamie Foxx kind of oh. ruined it. Or oh. not Jamie Foxx, but the writers for Jamie Foxx. Sure, sure. Yeah. Like, I know who is awful, 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 electricity awful. dude or something. Yeah, and some of his villain taglines, I was like, really? Like, did a six-year-old write this for you? Um, oh, yeah. But um, the first Amazing Spider-Man through Sony with Andrew Garfield is by far the best Spider-Man movie I think ever existed. I like yeah. it. I didn't, I didn't really like Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. I didn't really think he fit. Mm. But uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like Andrew Garfield was key impressive yeah i i should check that out i wonder i wonder if i can even watch those i don't even know where they are i, I, I don't know maybe you can i feel like you could rent it maybe yeah yeah or something. yeah maybe i'll do that um and then you know i are you a fan of uh are you pro thanos anti 
I mean, I made I made this joke the other day, but I was like, I understand why Thanos was doing what he was doing. I, I get it because of this virus thing, and I'm like, maybe Thanos is behind right. this. We don't know. I'm but, sure, it's um, a Thanos virus. No, I was I was anti Thanos. I mean, when I was sitting in that film, uh, Infinity War, like I was, my butt was so close to that edge. My stomach was flipping. Yeah, I was having like so anxiety good. attacks through the whole oh, wow. thing. Mm-hmm. And I could not hold myself together after those three hours. Like I wanted to scream and complain and yell because I was so, I was so viscerally angry. Yeah. But I, I couldn't say anything because everybody was like, "Don't ruin it for anybody else." Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. You know, it was so weird because I saw spoilers. Like one friend posted something on Instagram. No, like a, it was terrible. But and like listed every. It was awful. I was kind of you know the type of person who would do that. But you, I was just <laughs> like, I don't know. Even though I saw a little bit of that spoiler, I like still thought it was just amazing because who yeah. knew what was going to happen? Because it was also like, well, how could all these people go right in one movie? And then you're yeah. like, oh, now I know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I would say the reason I asked that Thanos question is because I feel like as far as villains go, just a great villain. You know? Oh, no, really absolutely. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, not that, yeah, I'm not agreeing with genocide. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I definitely am like, wow, impressive building of a character yeah and, and what you know people bash on the marvel movies because they don't think they're like up to par or whatever with like cinema i'm like nah. i don't know i love them <laughs> they're good they're amazing i i would watch those movies over and over again would not care i mean incredible yeah you know what i reckon i mean you probably already watch these but i would i could see you being like a good um making your own kind of thing is the like recap videos <laughs> Oh my gosh. I really love watching. A, it's like they think of everything. You know, they know all the nerdy stuff. They know the comics. They know every realm of whatever universe. But then, you know, they have these people go on and and they like host it themselves and stuff. And sometimes they're not the most charismatic. Um, But I appreciate their energy, you know. Um, But I could could see you being like a really good. Thank you. Maybe I feel like. You know, a little quarantine project. Yeah. uh, Because I think, you know, there needs to be more. Uh, yeah, more of those. <laughs> more more I watch endless people. hours of those things. Oh, I love those. I absolutely love those. <laughs> yeah. And I, I also watch them for like Westworld and things like where it's just like, oh my God, so much is going on. I don't mm. know if you watch, but it, but some of these TV shows are getting so complicated. I need a summary. Yeah, you need a, a background. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. And then I guess any other like advice on general positivity or things that you've learned over this small you know crazy quarantine or over longer periods of time um I don't know yeah I don't even know if I have quarantine advice (laughs) um (laughs) but well I I don't know maybe um you know when people when people started to just go crazy and like buying all those um buying all like the toilet paper and just (laughs) I I was really concerned about like how greedy people were getting Mm -hmm. um I mean I think one one of the very last like in-person game nights that my boyfriend and I hosted we went to the grocery store at like 2 a.m and we just saw how like desolate it was and I was just I was just so surprised about how um how much people were consuming and uh off of very little information at the time too and um I mean I remember I remember the next day I went to Walmart to try to score some cleaning supplies and just seeing the people like hoard for like bleach and things like that i was like this is crazy and i i don't know i guess my advice quote unquote would just you know look out for each other be nice like because everybody needs the same stuff that you need and you know be mindful for the people who actually like desperately need it like the elderly people and things like that um so i guess that's my little tidbit yeah no that's so true we all gotta wipe our butts like yeah you <laughs> which was the oddest thing for to go is toilet paper i'm like i don't know in what world right disaster equals need to buy toilet paper but you know <laughs> yeah in a specific know. case <laughs> yeah that was super weird and it's like you know you can just like wash your butt off i don't know you know if that's like no the big i thought problem, about that too right? i was like i was like why toilet paper you have a shower we have things yeah. called soap and washcloths right, like right. you know <laughs> baby wipes also like <laughs> yeah so all the weird same idea um yeah and like it was just so interesting because it it switched so fast and yeah even now, like, a lot of things are still out of stock. I mean, just from what I'm looking up online. So maybe they're back in stock now. But it's just, like, 
crazy how uh, quick that went. Yes. But also, you know, I feel lucky that I like still have some things that I just happen to have too. Yeah. But it's like, well, what if I didn't? And a lot of people don't. Like, right. This is nuts. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we've all, we're all living through this. Yeah. So we're all aware. Um, but, but I guess for also yeah. general positivity is, um, I'm, always, I'm I always love self help books. Those are my favorite. Um, <gasps> mm-hmm. But one of my all time favorites is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Oh, uh, I don't know if I've heard. Short, that. short read, very simple but very powerful, and it's one of those books you can always go back to. So, I don't know, get a get you a go to self help book when you need to. <gasps> yes. I oh, know. I see. Do you reread it, or is it just sort of like? something that you read once that you really liked. I I am uh I actually wanted to reread it during the quarantine um but it's it, yeah it's kind of one of those books you can always refer blah, blah, refer back to um it's just it's just very universal very simple very lovingly written and um yeah some of these self-help but like I tried reading the power of now and I was like my brain mm. hurts I'm like I don't even understand what this dude is saying beautiful message just i don't get it yeah i did start that too and i out of a friend's recommendation i was like huh oh, this is pretty extreme yeah i was like mm, i don't know if i can do this um and then uh my acting class always has uh books that we read during the session and uh, a couple sessions ago oh, cool. we were uh doing books with uh written by pima children and mm-hmm. even though those those are very lovely uh but they're lengthy and they're mm-hmm. they're very much to I don't think metaphysical is the right word, but um, just very ethereal. And you're just like, you you sure. have to read those books maybe like two or three times for you to get a concept. And I'm just like, okay, nah, yeah. it's, too, uh, it's too much. It's too much for me. <laughs> but um, yeah. Maybe next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are tough. If they're like, you know, kind of referring to things that have like a vocabulary that it's like, I don't even really think of things this way. Exactly. You're just like, I to can't. pick that up. Don Miguel Ruiz is great because he puts things very simply uh, but very powerfully. And then um, another book that I just read was Radical Compassion by Tara Barch. Barch? 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 Um, But she's great. She's also – it also – I don't know. Me, Mm -hmm. I always always like this. I like spiritual stuff, but I also like it being backed by practical science. (laughs) No, yeah, I I might be on the same – yeah. It it makes it click better uh for me. Sure. Um, and Tara Bright is also great because she's a PhD and she'll give you spiritual stuff, but also like stuff that actually That's helps official. you. And uh, oh, okay. she's also a therapist. That's great. So yeah. No, like, I, yeah. I think, yeah, like kind of self-help for like people who are a little bit more less spiritual or, or like more, you know, logic based yeah. science stuff. Yeah. That's kind of where I gravitate towards too, because sometimes I can get in the skeptical zone of like, okay, but come on. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is annoying, but, but yeah, also, I like you have that guy, but you uh-huh. have that, you have spirituality and then you have like that extreme, like ethereal metaphysical, metaphysical stuff. And you're just like, right. I don't know what that's about, but I don't really want to dive really deep into that. And it's <laughs> yeah, easy. Too. It's easy to yeah. in the spiritual stuff, but yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like even reading a lot of um, sort of like sociology books or things where it's like Malcolm Gladwell talked about the fact that, you know, this happens because we believe this and da da da. And it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of fun way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not self-help necessarily, but it's like this human behavior isn't necessarily magical. It's just like this happens because of that. And you're yeah. like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and then that can maybe lead us in the more spiritual direction eventually. Right. But like, yeah, yeah, I think it's, that's a it's good to know. I'll check out that one yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. Got all the time. I got to download some more audiobooks. I know. Um, I know. But, but yeah, I guess, all right. Well, I mean, like, we're kind of wrapping up, but cool. I mean, uh, anything you want to plug or things? I mean, obviously the podcast. Yeah. Like that. I mean, like, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I feel weird shamelessly plugging my own podcast and your oh, you got it. podcast. Oh, that's what, that's if the you're, point. If you're giving me permission, yes. then, uh, yeah, please so check out permission. my podcast in the mix with Gabrielle Lee so you can get it on Spotify and or Apple podcasts. Um, yeah, we revamped it. We have theme music now, which is really exciting. It's very crucial. And I do not have that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and new segments and stuff like that. So it's it's cool. It's exciting. Incredible. Yay. Yeah. And thank you again for, you know, taking a little time out of the quarantine. To no, I'm so happy. Over a I was like <laughs> deprived of like, no, please let me just talk to somebody else. God. Nah. Yes, I know. Yeah, this is very much therapy for me. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, here we are. Um, so thanks for <laughs> subjecting yourself to this. Um, but course. yeah, and hopefully, you know, meet in real person, in yes. real person, in real, in life, real life someday. Yeah. 
Um, all right, great. But cool. thank you, Gabrielle. Of course, thank Yay. you. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to that episode, guys. That was Gabrielle Elise, a very talented young woman and a podcast host herself. Make sure to check out In The Mix. That's her podcast. Um, and I get to be a guest on it, I think, at some point. So you might see that at some point. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I just I had a great time talking with her. And I think I really am thankful for this podcast and opportunity to talk to really cool people, even when we feel super isolated, you know. Um, so keep doing that. Keep FaceTiming your friends. Uh, start your own podcast. Who knows, right? It might be just the thing to get you out of a funk. But also, I have another really fun tip that I discovered recently. So I've been I've been like weirdly not watching a ton of television just because... Sometimes, you know, maybe I do binge a lot, but sometimes it's like just I'm such a fragile person at the moment because of this quarantine stuff that sometimes I'll watch something and be like, okay, I don't think I can watch Ozark right now because it's a little depressing and I don't know if I need that. Sometimes it can be fun for like an escape. You're like, oh, wow, good thing I'm not Marty Bird in Ozark because, you know, that could be worse than what I'm doing right now. But if you're looking for a slightly lighter escape, obviously comedy is great. But in particular, I've been watching basically what I would describe as television for babies, uh, for tiny little babies. Um, but I'm personally writing for a Disney Junior show right now. And that show does not come out for like years. But as a result, I have been watching other baby shows, preschooler shows, uh, just to see like, okay, what's the tone? What are we, what are we looking to strike here? And in particular, I got really into Molang, M-O-L-A-N-G, which is a cartoon bunny rabbit, uh, that just looks like a little uh, circular little bean. Um, that's sort of the shape that it's going for. And then its best friend, Pew Pew, it's a little yellow chicky. Gotta say, their antics, hilarious. They don't even really speak any language. They're just gibberish. It's like the minions almost. Um, and it's just a lot of physical humor and keeps it really light. It's for babies. And look, I am right now, I have the, the emotional, uh, capacity of a baby. Okay. So don't judge me, but that's, uh, something I might recommend if you're looking for just really light, very uncomplicated stuff that brings you joy because it's a lot of cute little cute little rabbit things running around um yeah that's my tip for today you can find it on hulu that's a little uh free plug for molang eh? so this got weird real fast but that's kind of the nature of outros so adios amigos have a good day